God is worthy to be praised today just for who he is. He is worthy and we bless his name. Uh, we welcome you today to Be Restored Worship Center. And uh, we count it a privilege and an honor to uh, be blessed and graced with another day um, on this side. And since we're here, I believe that we ought to give God praise and glory for who he is on this day and forget not his benefits toward us. Uh, we are the recipients of his benefits, his grace, his love, his mercy, his deliverance. We are the direct recipients of that. And I believe that it is imperative that we take time to acknowledge him and to give him glory. And I pray that the spirit of the Lord would be with you on today as we go into uh, the word of God on today and that the Lord would have his way in the word on today and that it will find you uh, where uh, you need it most. Amen. So we're going to go straight to the word today. So if you would take a moment and go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse 5 and 6. That's, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 and 6. And it says this, reading from the Amplified uh, Version. It says, test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your life as committed believers. Examine yourself, not me. Or do you not recognize this about yourself by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected as counterfeit. Verse six says, but I hope you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. But I hope you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. And I have the simple uh, subject for today, and that subject is self-care. Self-care. Um, in life, most of us have a certain level of demand and expectation. Um, we have uh, this level of demand, whether it be from our children or our spouses, our, our, our jobs, our, our friends. Uh, we are in relationships and uh, even church work. There is a certain level of demand on our life that pulls us in multiple directions. And it is important that we are able to pause and hit the uh, pause button and engage in self-care. Uh, self-care is when we intentionally uh, take uh, the time to, to take an active role in protecting our well-being. Uh, when we self-care, it is often with the intent to recalibrate, to rejuvenate, uh, to do the essential things so that we don't neglect ourselves. Uh, sometimes we take a trip. Uh, we get away from that which is familiar. We put on our, uh, our vacation clothes and, and we get away from that which is uh, usual. Um, I don't know about you, but I love to be near the water and somewhere tropical. Something about, for me, the water is a reset. It is a, a place that I can go and reflect. For others, it may be the mountains, whatever it is that uh, is just important at times that we get away from those things which are usual from someone else. It may be a spa day to go and do the things that are necessary uh, to take care of the physical body. Uh, for others, it may be necessary to just disconnect. I'm disconnecting from social media today. I'm not going to turn on the news. I'm not going to take any phone calls. I'm putting my phone on do not disturb today because I understand that I need a break. I need to do some self-care. Uh, for others, it may be going on your patio or your deck and just 
uh, curling up with a, a good book and uh, drinking some uh, good lemonade. Uh, whatever it is, we all have things that we do that is uh, self-care for us. And I believe that self-care is essential to our lives because it becomes difficult to pour from an empty picture. But here's the thing. Even in our self-care in the natural, it is important that we do the self-care that is necessary for our spiritual walk and our relationship with the Lord. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, it's good to go get your hair done and your nails done and, and take a trip and disconnect. But it is just as important that in those times that we uh, take some uh, time out and we spend some time with the Lord. And not only do we spend time, but I believe that is important that when we self-care, we self-evaluate, that we examine where I am in my relationship with the Lord. Where am I in my walk? Am I doing the things that God has called? called me to do? What's uh, next for me? Uh, what God, what would you have me to do next? What would you have me to say next? Yes, I'm here, but I don't want to be satisfied with where I am, but I'm going to take this time to pull away from everything and I'm going to do a self-evaluation. How is my spiritual health? Um, and here's the thing, self-examination -ex can be difficult. Uh, being transparent with one's own self can be challenging when we have to take a look at the man or the woman in the mirror and look our own selves in the eye and be real with where we are in our spiritual journey. I wish I had a witness right here that uh, when we look at those places that are unrepentive in our lives, when we look at our lives and look at those places that we know that we still need deliverance in, uh, when we look at our lives and uh, are real about where our shortcomings are, uh, when we look at our lives and understand I still have some growing up to do, self-examination can be difficult, but it is necessary. So uh, we have to take the time out and do some self-care. Uh, what does self-care look like? It means I'm going to spend some time with the Lord. I'm going to spend some time in prayer. I'm going to spend some time uh, in the word of God. I'm going to spend some time listening to what God is saying and not just talking, but I'm going to give him space in my life for direction. Why? Because it is important that I self-care, that I don't get so caught up in doing work and doing stuff that I'm not taking the time to be rejuvenated and allow God's spirit to blow on me that uh, we need his spirit in our lives. And it is important that as we self-care, that we avail ourselves to the wind of God, that we avail ourselves to the refilling of his spirit. Why? So that we can make sure that we are operating at optimum capacity, that my capacity and the level at which I operate is where it should be, and I'm not operating on fumes. I wish I had another witness right there. Uh, uh, one of the things that we have to do is look at where we are for real. Am I living the life? Am I living a Christ life? Am I living a righteous life? Am I in pursuit of him in all that I do? Listen, it's a full-time job to just examine and keep this flesh under subjection. Uh, it, it's a full-time job self-caring uh, my heart, self-caring my spirit. It's a full-time job. And here's the thing. If we would focus 
on taking care of ourselves, then we would not have time to be worried about what other people are doing and what they have going on in their life and spreading gossip and spreading news about what's going on in everyone else's life if we would take the time to look at our own lives and do our own self work. Uh, the Williams brothers had a song uh, uh, some years ago that said, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Do your own self-care. Sweep around your own front door. Take care of yourself before uh, we start to... Uh, pass judgment and look at other people's lives. So we have to ask this question. Am I fulfilling God's will? Am I doing what's right? Am I loving my neighbor? Am I cultivating my relationship with God? Have I repented of the mistakes that I've made and my shortcomings? Listen, uh, we have to understand that repentance is a daily thing. It's a consistent thing because as long as we are in this flesh, we are going to fall short. As long as we are in this flesh, we are going to do some things that are not pleasing to God. And we can't get to the point that we feel that we are so righteous and that we are so saved and we are so sanctified that we cannot humble ourselves and repent. It, it turn from those things that are not pleasing and that are preventing us from living a righteous life in God. So we have to look at that. Go with me here to Luke chapter 6, verse 42. Luke 6 and 42. It says, how can you say to your brother, brother, allow me to take the speck that is in your eye, take out the speck that is in your eye. When you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye, you hypocrite, play actor, pretender, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck that is out of your brother's eye. Listen, you've got to take care of yourself first. The things that are going on in your life first before you go around trying to fix uh, be Ayala and fix people's lives. We've got to take the time and fix our own lives. Like when, whenever you fly and they're giving the instructions for the flight and they're giving all the safety inspections and where the exits are. And they say, listen, if there is a loss of cabin pressure, the mask will fall out. But here's the thing, they tell you what, put on your own mask first before you try to help someone else. And that is what's happening with a lot of us. We are not taking the time to deal with our own stuff, to deal with our own issues, to put on our own mask, to make sure that we are breathing in the proper oxygen, that we're breathing in the right spirit before we go out and try to fix other people's lives. But I say to you today, we've got to do some self-care. We've got to look at ourselves. We've got to examine ourselves and be real with ourselves and be real with God where we are. Listen, some of us are drowning, but we will not admit to ourselves that we are drowning. We won't admit to God that we are drowning, but we have got to be real with where we are and say, God, I need your help. I'm doing some self-care. I'm doing some self-examination. I'm examining my heart. I'm looking at my intent. I'm looking at my mindset. What's my motive? I have to do some self-care. I've got to work out my own salvation. I, I can't get so caught up in what someone else is doing and what they're not doing and their shortcomings and their sins. I've got to work 
out my own walk. I've got to make sure that I make it in. And listen, it's not about the fact that we don't witness. It's not about the fact that we don't encourage one another. But the thing is that we cannot come from a place of judgment. We can't come from a place of pulling each other down when we know that in our lives, we got some our own dirt. But sometimes what, what I've realized in life is that some of us spend so much time uh, talking about others and drawing attention to other folks so that the focus is not on us and the stuff that we have going on. It makes me comfortable. Why? Because the more I talk about other folks, the more I judge other folks, the more I shine the spotlight on what someone else is doing, I don't have to deal with my own stuff and no one's looking at me because I've diverted the attention elsewhere. But we have got to get to the point where we have a reality check with ourselves and do our own self care. Take care of yourself. So it says, how can you go over there and they got a little speck and you got a big log in your eye, but you can't see clearly until you get the log out of your eye. You don't have the right and the ability to go over there and judge your brother for the speck that they have in their eye. Once you deal with yourself, once you do your self-care, then you are better positioned to help someone else. Yeah, yes. Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7 says this. You shall consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Listen, if you, if you, me, myself, and I would take the time to self-care and consecrate ourselves and live and strive for holiness because God is holy, then what it does, it puts us in the position and the mindset to keep his commandments to do his statutes to do those things which he has called for us to do to live the life that he call is calling us to why because when we sanctify ourselves when we consecrate ourselves we understand that he ultimately sanctifies us but we have got to meet him halfway and once we do the self-care that is necessary to consecrate our minds to consecrate our hearts, to consecrate our intent, to consecrate our motives, then once we do that and align ourselves with his will and his way, then he can sanctify us because we understand it's not because of me, it's not because of my righteousness, but when I did some self-care, I understand my shortcomings. I understand my faults. I understand that I need Jesus. Self-care will make you have that reality check that I need the Lord, that in my righteousness, I am still a mess, that in what I feel my best days, I still fall short. I, I have not arrived to the place that I got it going on, that I'm all that. I need him every day of my life. I need him every hour. I need thee, Lord. I need thee. When we do self-care, we understand and realize that we have got to consecrate ourselves, that we've got to take the time. Listen, most of us, the only time that we consecrate ourselves is when the leader calls for consecration. And yes, there are times when the leader, the pastor, the apostle will call for a time of consecration. But I believe that God is moving us 
to a place for a lot of us. And the way that we have had to operate for the last year is because we have got to get to the point that we don't rely on other people to call a consecration, that we don't call on other people to uh, demand that we do self-care, but we will take the time necessary and we will recognize that I need a time of personal consecration and self-care so that I can hear from God, so that I can get some direction, so that I can love right, so that I can be available to those people that need me and my fruit in this season. We've got to examine and look at our own fruit. We've been talking about uh, being planted. We've been talking about uh, the fruits of the spirit. And this is a part of it that in that process of being planted and producing and yielding fruit, we have got to examine the fruit in our lives and see what we are producing and what we are giving and wherever there is correction needed, wherever there is a recalibration needed, we have to do that which is necessary to make sure that we are doing the work, that we're working it out. So we've got to fact check that we've got to do a personal investigation and take a look at our own fruit. So in, in, our, in our focus scripture in, in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, it says, examine yourselves, not me, meaning take a look at yourself. Don't look at me. Right now, it's not the time. Don't look at what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. Examine yourself, not me. Or do you not recognize this about yourself by an ongoing experience? Listen, if you can't recognize what's going on in your life by your own experience, that means you need to take a little bit more time and do some self-examination. And then the end result of that, that we must realize that as we examine ourselves, the ending of that particular line says that Christ is in you. Jesus Christ is in you, and it is him that as we examine ourselves, we ought to see Christ. That when I look at myself in the mirror, uh, the more I live, the more I do, that as I do my self-care, the more I self-care, the less I should see of myself. Y'all gonna get that in a minute. That the more I care for myself, the less I should see of myself. The more I self-care, the more I examine myself, the more I dig deep, the more I should start to resemble the Christ that is on the inside of me and what's on the inside of me, the Christ, uh, the hope of glory, should show up in the world that as I go out into the world, because I've done the self-care necessary, that I, I've consecrated myself, that I've taken a look at myself, that I am giving the world Christ and not I. That I preach Christ, not myself. That I give God the glory and not glory in myself. But when we truly self-care and self-examinate or give ourselves a self-examination, the more we allow Christ to be a real in us, the more space that we give for his spirit. Isn't that wonderful that the more I look at self, the more I decrease? And in the natural, yes, we take a look and it's all about ourselves and making sure we feel good and we look good. That, that's great. But at the same time, it does not benefit us to look great on the, on the outside, to have our hair done and nails done and to get a massage and take a trip. And on the inside, our spiritual life is lacking. It all has to line up. And doing the self-care necessary will position us to make sure that we recognize that it is Christ in us. It's not us, but it's Christ in us. But if we evaluate ourselves, this is 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. But if we 
evaluated and judged ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we would not be judged. In essence, listen, take the time, evaluate yourself honestly and recognize where you are. I got to recognize where I am. And not only comes recognition, but it comes with corrected behavior that I'm not just going to recognize and acknowledge it, but I'm going to do the things with the help of the Lord that is necessary to correct the behavior or the shortcoming or the things. I'm not going to stay where I am. Just because I failed there, I'm not going to stay there. Just because that's been a habit of mine does not mean that it's going to stay a habit of mine. But once I do the self-care and allow the spirit of God to really work in me, then he will correct, uh, give me the tools to correct my behavior. He'll give me the tools to live the life that he's calling me to live that I don't need someone else to tell me uh, how to live. But when we have true relationship with him, when we are truly led by his spirit and we listen to God's spirit in us, then we will do the things that are necessary and it will be reflective in our lives. And if we take the time to judge ourselves and to deal with ourselves, then God does not have to do it. Listen, I would much rather judge myself and deal with myself than to go unrepented and go my own way and then ha have God to have to deal with me in my mess, like for real. Yes, he's gracious, yes, he's merciful, but there comes a time when he has to deal with us based on what we have done and what we're doing. So even in this, in this particular passage, what they're talking about uh, taking communion and, and, and saying, listen, you've got to examine yourself. You can't drink of this cup unworthily. Let every man search his heart. Let every man examine himself so that you are not taking on me and my spirit, taking on my flesh, you're taking on my blood unworthingly, but we've got to do the necessary work so that we are not taking on things uh, in our present condition. It says what? Some of you are sick. Uh, uh, some of you are dealing with some things because you have taken me on unworthingly. So it says, listen, examine yourselves, evaluate yourselves, honestly, and recognize where you are and correct that which needs to be corrected so that you would not be judged. Where I come up short, it is my goal to get it right. Where I failed in the past, I don't plan on failing again. Here's the thing, we passed the test. Here's, here's the great thing. That in uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 6, it says, but I hope you will acknowledge that you get it in your mind, that you understand this, that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. What do you say? That we recognize that once we examine ourselves, once we do the self-care necessary, and we realize that it's Christ in us, that we acknowledge him, that we accept him fully, then we pass the test, that our life is reflective of him and we are not rejected. But he loves us and he keeps us and he holds us and he puts his hand on us. He stamps us with himself, that he gives us his spirit and his spirit is in full operation so that we can produce and live a life consecrated and yielded to him. So we don't fail the test. So when we take the examination and try to see, am I living the life? We pass the test. 
So I say to you today, you can pass the test when you examine yourself and do the self-care that is necessary for your spiritual walk and your relationship, you pass the test. You are part of the family. You are engrafted in him. And listen, all of us, all of us have work to do. As long as we are in this body, we have to do the work necessary. There's always going to be something that we're going to have to deal with in this flesh that is in us. It ain't about nobody else. But this day, listen, I want you, for lack of a better term, I'm gonna tell you to be selfish in this moment. And what do I mean? Do the self-care and the work that is necessary to make sure that your life and your relationship is cultivated in Christ. And that you do, that we do what is necessary to ensure that we reflect Christ in everything that we do. That it's not about us, but it's Christ that is in us. And so because I take the time to do the self-care necessary, that I consecrate myself, that I make sure that not only is my physical self taken care of, but I'm not going to neglect my spirit. That I'm not going to neglect the Lord on the inside of me, that I'm not going to neglect my prayer time, that I'm not going to neglect my time in the word of God, but I'm going to do it consistently that I'm not going to wait until I run on empty, but I'm going to make a conscious decision to regularly self-care. And I believe that spiritually, it is something that we have to do every single day, that we take the moments and the time necessary to connect with ourselves and to connect with God. Listen, I don't know spiritually, who everybody else is connecting with when they self-care, but I am connecting to the spirit of God in my life. That it is the spirit of God, that that's the spiritual aspect that I'm connecting to. That's the spiritual work I'm doing to make that we have to do, that we understand that it is a, the spirit of God. It is Christ in us that we connect to, that we make sure that we are in right standing with, that we have everything that we need in order to live the life of righteousness, that we strive for holiness. Why? Because he's holy and he's called us to holiness. It's not a denomination, it's not in what you wear, but it is in your heart. It is in your mindset. And it, then it shows up in our behavior and what we do and how we do it. So I admonish you today, do the self-care that is necessary. Yes, do the self-care that is necessary for your mental well-being. Do the self-care that is necessary for your physical well-being. Do the self-care that is necessary for your emotions. But at the same time, don't do all of that and not self-care for your spirit, man. To make sure, God, I'm going to test and evaluate myself to see whether I'm in the faith and living as a committed believer, I'm going to examine myself and recognize this about me, that is Christ in me. And because you're in me, and because I have examined myself, I've consecrated myself, I will not 
pass. I will pass the test. I will not fail. And I will not be seen as counterfeit. But I'm going to be authentic and genuine in my walk and my relationship with you, God. If all else can pass away, people can come and go. This relationship can end. But at the end of the day, I want this relationship to be authentic and real and to pass the test. I refuse to fail the test and be rejected. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for what you have spoken over our lives. So God, this day, help us by your spirit to self-care that we don't be so focused on the natural that we neglect our spiritual walk with you. God, give us the strength to really look at ourselves and to even deal with those areas that we have refused to deal with because of what it will bring up and the hurt that is in that area. So we just forgot, we try to forget about it. We suppress it, but God help us to truly do a self-examination and to dig deep and do the self-care that is necessary for this time, for this space, so that as we do it, as you're taking us to the next level, that as you're blessing us, that as you are expanding our territory, we will be in the right place, that we will have the right heart, that we would have the right mind, renewing us the right spirit so that we can live a life that is reflective of you and that when individuals come to us, this has been our prayer over the last few weeks, God, as people come to us to partake of the fruit that we are producing, they will get exactly what they need by your spirit in operation in us. So God, we want to produce much fruit and we don't want to produce rotten fruit. We don't want to produce fruit that has not been fully ripened. So God, help us to do the work that is necessary and that you are calling for us to do daily. So God, we not only will we do that, but we acknowledge where we have fallen short. God, we have sinned and come short of your glory. We haven't always done what you called us to do. And there's some things that you've asked us to do that we've left undone. God, forgive us. And not only do we ask for your forgiveness, but it is our intent in this moment as we self-care to change the narrative, to change our behavior, to change our actions so that we will do what you have commanded. We will keep your statues. We will keep those things which you have called us to do so that you will get the glory out of our lives. So God, we thank you for everyone everywhere that is under the sound of my voice in this moment, that you are breathing on us again, that even as we self-care, that as we examine ourselves, you will give us a fresh wind of your spirit and you will breathe on us. God, breathe on us the breath of life. Breathe into us so that we can be filled the more with your spirit. We want more of you and less of us. So God, fill us up with your spirit so that we can walk after the spirit and not after the flesh, so that we can be led by your spirit, not by our own mindset, our own intellect, our own agenda, but we want to be led by your spirit in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Listen, God bless you. Uh, I pray that this word uh, would help you and benefit your life on today. Um, it's again, self-care 
and self-examination is not always easy, but with the help of the Lord, I believe that he is calling for us in this moment, in this time to examine ourselves and consecrate ourselves and to really seek him consistently. I believe that, and that, that we will have live a life that is reflective of who he is in our lives. So I hope and pray that wherever you find yourself, that you, in this moment, you'll say, God, I ask for your forgiveness. God, I pray that you will enter my heart on this day and really take over uh, and, and reveal yourself to me, that I acknowledge you as the King of Kings. I acknowledge you as the Lord of Lords. I acknowledge you as Savior. God, you are Savior. You died. But more importantly, you rose with all power in your hand. And I acknowledge that you are in control. And it's just that simple to accept him and to receive him in your life on this day. Don't let this day, this moment pass and not accept him, Jesus Christ, as savior of your life. And there are those of us that have felt disconnected and have have. Uh, turned away from church and things of the church, but I speak to you today that you can do the self-care that is necessary, that you can come back into right relationship with the Savior, that it's not about church, but it's about relationship. It's not about religion, but it's about relationship and connect with a body of believers that will help to motivate and provoke you to good works. And I believe that Be Restored Worship Center is one of those places that wherever you find yourself, you can connect with us and we will work this thing out together. While we work doing our self-care, we are gonna work it out together in the areas that we need to join together and to push and motivate each other to live the Christ life, amen. So I, I pray that you would, uh, self-care today and be that at the end of this day you will find yourself where you need to be in the lord amen so god bless you listen before we go today uh if you want to sow a seed into the ministry i believe that this is good ground this is fertile ground uh this is a ground that is being taken care of and god's hand is on be restored worship center um, so if you want to give and sow your tithes, your offering, uh, you can do that today. Uh, you can go to Givelify, uh, download the Givelify app. If you go there, look for Be Restored Worship Center in Lith Lithia Springs, Georgia. You can give there. You can go to PayPal at Be Restored Worship Center, or you can visit us at berestored.net, and the links to give will be there. This is good ground. God blesses. Uh, the cheerful giver. And so as he has blessed you, as he, as he has given you seed, uh, then take that seed and sow it back. There is a principle that as you sow, you will reap. And it's just that simple, no gimmicks, no games, but it's just the word of the Lord that he that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, but he that sows uh, bountifully shall reap bountifully with that same uh, spirit. So I pray that as you sow your seed, that you will see the harvest from that which you've sown. Amen. Listen, as you go throughout this week, we thank you so much for joining us today here at Be Restored Worship Center. Listen, share this message um, on your social media. Share this message with someone that needs to hear it on today. And I believe that this is a message for the earth that we all need. Even me, I'm preaching to myself. We all need this word. But listen, we'll be back here on next Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, in our time of praise and worship and the word. So we look forward to seeing you here next Sunday at Be Restored Worship Center. Listen, bring somebody with you. Spread the word. Come on. Can we just join in together? Grab your family around, uh, your devices or your TV or send it to someone else. Let's share this message of Jesus Christ. And we love you here at Be Restored Worship Center. Go in peace and have a wonderful week and be safe. God bless you.